Okay, Instagram, have you been worried about getting negative reviews on your upcoming books? Or maybe you are nervous about getting critiqued in your business. We're gonna be talking all about negative reviews and positive reviews today, and we're gonna get your questions answered. So if you're jumping in, say hello, let me know where you're joining me from, and let's talk about dealing with negative feedback. I've got some points I want to share with you. I talk about this a lot. I have lots of videos on this, but because some of you are new to me, especially some of you are coming to me specifically because you are an aspiring professional author, I want to get those answered for you. Now, you know I'm a multi-time best-selling author. I'm also a social media marketing strategist. I run multiple businesses. I'm extremely public. I am constantly on live streams. I am in national news and all like all the things. So I've gotten a lot of critique over the years and I've had to really learn as somebody who is an introvert who takes everything to heart and really, really feels the negativity when it comes, I am bringing you what I got. So let's talk about this um, and let's talk about those reviews. Hey, hey, thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for jumping in. Let's go ahead and talk about how to handle reviews as an author. This also qualifies for anybody who is a creative entrepreneur. So we are going to be chatting. Oh my goodness, so many notifications happening right now from my replay, sorry. Um, we are going to, oh, I guess it makes it a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? There we go. Uh, the first point I wanna talk about is you should not be ever reading your reviews. You, as an author, you're not here for the reviews. Reviews are not meant for you. Reviews specifically are meant to help other readers decide if a book is going to be the right fit for them. If someone is directing comments to the author in the reviews, they are wrong in what they're doing. That is not what this is meant for. It is not meant to go after the author or to attack the author. This is solely and specifically meant to help other people decide if a book is going to be a good fit for them. So first off, there shouldn't be content that really helps you in that one. But second, if that's what they're doing, they're doing it wrong. It's not going to be valid. So do not read your reviews. They're not meant for you. But in addition to that, you should not be reading your reviews because a lot of them are mean and a lot of them are negative because a lot of people don't know how to write a proper review. So don't read your reviews. A couple of authors do. There are some authors that do like that and they do that and more power to them, I guess. But I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to not be anywhere near your reviews. That has nothing to do with you and it's not going to impact you in any way, shape or form. With that in mind, we're gonna get to another point that is connected to this, so hold tight. Hold tight, we're gonna come back to that. But you should not be reading your own reviews, period. Like there's no reason, there's no logic for that. Don't do that. Now, we are, this is, I don't like the new way that they are doing the assets up on the screen. It used to be so easy and now it is not. <laughs> the second thing I wanna talk about is where you're taking your critique from. You should only be taking critique from highly qualified sources. So let's think about this and let's break this down. Who is writing book reviews? Readers. Not writers, not people who are trained, not people who are qualified. It's readers who want their opinions heard. Those people are not qualified. If a doctor was going to be critiqued by someone, it wouldn't be some random person off the street. It would be another medical professional who is trained and understands the industry. A chef is not going to take your opinion on whether the food was too salty or not, but they would listen to another chef who wants to help improve them. So we are not taking critique from someone who is not qualified to tell us. People who are leaving book reviews are readers. They're not authors. In fact, it's poor practice for authors to be leaving reviews. We're, we're technically not allowed to do that. And it, it doesn't look good either. So authors aren't leaving book reviews. If you want critique on your work, you're getting it from a highly qualified source. Other writers, other editors, publishing professionals who have studied the industry for a really long time. You shouldn't be listening to people who aren't qualified to give you advice and feedback. You should be listening to industry professionals who can help you to grow. And when they give you critique, they are going to be giving you qualified critique. They're looking to help you grow. They're not looking to tear you down. They're not looking to bring you down to their level. They're not looking to make you into a clone of them. They are not looking to make you do what they want you to do. These people are helping you to grow because they understand the industry because they've been there. So look for highly qualified people to join you in this conversation about how you can improve. I do not listen to people who are coming behind me. I am only listening to people who have gone before me and can pull me up to the next level, not somebody who's below me that I have to pull up. 
Does that make sense? We do not want to get our critique from somebody who has, doesn't have the experience that we've had. Get somebody more qualified to give you that critique. If you've got questions, if you have comments, I got a couple more points I want to cover today, but go ahead and drop those down below. And I want to make sure that we're getting them answered. I'm excited that you're all joining us. I'm excited that you are ignoring work to be here today because we are talking all about something that can be really, really hard and really difficult for us to hear. Oh no, did I miss, I missed one. You guys, I definitely, um, I definitely missed one of my slides. Okay. So here we go. We're going to pretend we're on number two. Let me put you on. Let me put you on this one. We're going to go with questions. Number three, it did not show up in my camera roll. I'm sorry. Number three is to get a trusted source to look at reviews and bring you the important parts. Now, this is really important. Remember when I just said we were going to come back to this? This is where we're coming back to. If you need to read your reviews, if you need to know what's going on, don't read them yourself. Find a trusted source and have them read it. Have them read the bad stuff, the negative stuff, the good stuff, the in-between stuff, and then bring you what you need to be aware of. If there's a particularly nice review, they can bring it to you. And if there's something that is not nicely said, but is a valid point, they can bring it to you in a gentle way. So if they're reading through your reviews and they're seeing everybody complaining about the same thing, they can bring that to you gently. They can bring it to you nicely and you can have a conversation about it. It's gonna hurt a lot less from somebody that you trust who is softening the blow of whatever this conversation is going to be. So you can still listen to unqualified opinions and book reviews and things like that without having to experience it yourself. You can have it in a highly qualified way. So get somebody who understands the industry, who can bring you the valid things from your reviews and tell you what's going on so that you can then implement that or decide if you want to implement that. And this is a good strategy for author friends. So find a friend in the industry and swap. You read their reviews, they read your reviews, and then you bring each other what you need to know so that it is a nicer, better, less stressful experience for everyone involved. If you have questions, now's the time. Go ahead and drop those down below. Now, the next thing I do want to talk about today is a little bit of tough love. If you want to be an author, you have to develop a tough skin. You just have to. If you are highly sensitive, this is not something that's going to go away. You don't get to put your hand in the sand and think it's never going to happen to you. You have to develop that tough skin. I know it's not fun and it does hurt and it does take a long time. For me, I definitely had to. I had to just go through the hurt and through the pain and now I can kind of let it roll off my back and I can kind of figure out what is a qualified statement and what is not a qualified statement, what I need to be listening to, what I don't need to be listening to. And the more harassment you get and the more negative stuff you get, the easier it gets to pinpoint what is just people being mean and what is actually something you should pay attention to. But in any creative field, whether it's an author or an artist or a songwriter, you are going to get very mean people who are mean just for the sake of being mean. It's unfortunate, but it's true. As a creative, you will get critiqued a lot, which means you are going to have to develop that tough skin, which means you're going to have to get beaten up a lot. I'm sorry. It's just the way that it goes. You can't get your head around it. In fact, um, yeah, we're going to go on to this next point because it has to do with what I'm going to say next. So let me pull up my last one. And I want to talk a little bit about this because this again is a little tough love. If you are someone who is highly sensitive, who doesn't do well with critique, who doesn't do well with meanness or being targeted or being harassed, if you are somebody who doesn't like negative reviews, if you're somebody who doesn't like the truth, if you're somebody who doesn't like or wants to be held by the hand all the time, this is not the industry for you. Just because you love something doesn't mean you should be doing it. If this is going to hurt you and your mental and emotional health too much, you need to take care of yourself and not get into this industry. It might suck to hear that, I know, but it really comes down to, can you withstand this? If this is something you want to do, if this is something you love doing, you can do this, but you have to understand you're gonna get hit with all those things. There's no avoiding it. If you cannot handle this and you know you can't handle this, don't put yourself in this bad situation. This is a situation that's not changing. You're not gonna be the magical author who only gets nice things said about you. You absolutely have to, have to develop that tough skin and be okay with the critique and the criticism and the hate because it's going to come whether you like it or not. So know yourself. 
If this is not something you can mentally and emotionally handle, this is not the business for you. Go get a nine to five and work for somebody else. If you don't wanna be on the spotlight, if you don't wanna do the heavy lifting with your marketing and your branding and doing the live streams and being out in public and doing all the events and like all the actual hard work that goes into author life, you are going to not do so great in this world. So know where you stand on this and then take care of yourself, prioritize yourself. If you wanna still write as a hobby for you without putting it in the public, that's fine. You can do that, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. I wrote for myself and I wrote for myself. I turned down a bunch of contracts and then I didn't do anything with my books and I just left them to take care of myself and my manuscripts. Then I found the correct fit for it. There's no shame in doing what you love creatively and not putting it out in the world. So you have the ability to do that. If it's going to affect your mental and, uh, and emotional well-being, do not get into this industry, period. Okay. If you've got questions, I really wanna make sure we're getting those answers so you can go ahead and drop those for me now. I know that we've got questions and comments coming in and so many notifications. 3 p.m. on a Tuesday apparently is the time for everyone to try to contact me and like all the things. Um, but I wanna get these answered for you. So let me go ahead and check this out. Uh, that's a great tip, I never thought of that. That's a great idea. I know, pairing up with people. If you don't wanna face the music, if you don't wanna deal with the hard stuff, have somebody stand in for you. It's a great way of doing things. I just recently bought your book review journal and saw your YouTube videos about book reviews, but my question is, how can I provide valuable reviews that will help them how to, rep how to improve books going forward? That is not your job. That is not your job at all. It has nothing to do with the author. Book reviews are for helping other readers decide if it's going to be a right fit for them. You are not a qualified source of telling authors how to write their books. If they are getting critique that comes from other qualified authors whom they are asking to be involved with this, the only people who get to give professional advice to authors are their publishers, their agents, and the people who are part of their career. You as a reader are not responsible for that. You don't get to help. You're not qualified for that, period, end of discussion. Your job is to help other readers decide if the book is a good fit for them. You don't go on Amazon and look up a vacuum cleaner and tell the vacuum cleaner manufacturer how to do their job. You tell other people whether it's going to work for their situation or not. This is a review like anything else. And readers have gotten into this state where they feel like their opinions should inform what authors are doing. And that's just not the case in any situation. You're not telling a professional chef how to cook their meals, right? No, we are letting the qualified people do that. Your job is to help other people decide if they are going to buy that book or not. Uh, let's see. Certain genres, one star reviews make me buy the book. And that's a good thing because that tells you what you do and do not want to see. So people can jump on and they can, let me actually just take this. There we go. People can jump on to those reviews and say, uh, you know, this, I did not like this book because of this genre and this trope and like this thing. And that could be exactly what you want. So their one star is going to be your five star. And that's totally cool and totally valid. It's not a great way of writing reviews because again, reviews are supposed to help make those decisions. So it should be, if you like this, this is for you. And if you don't like this, this is not for you. But you can look at those one star reviews and say, oh, okay, they didn't like that it was a love triangle and they didn't like that it was enemies to lovers and they didn't like that it was whatever. Ever. And those could be the things that trigger you into saying, oh, this is for me. So yeah, check the one star reviews. That's totally fine. Weight off of my shoulders on that. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hello. We're talking about getting negative reviews with books and with anything artistic that you are doing. So if you've got questions, if you've got comments, now is the time. Go ahead and drop those all about reviews and critique and how to deal with it. And I wanted to point out, I forgot to do this while we were chatting while it was up. Point number five was if you do not have the ability to process the things that you're going to experience as an author, you should not be an author. You need to take care of your mental and emotional health first. I want to tell you a little bit of a story. Back in the day, long before I became an author, I had an author friend. I had a lot of author friends. I used to work with the authors and teach them in marketing and like all the things. And she had gotten into this industry, wrote a really good book. It was a very good book. I enjoyed it. Everybody enjoyed it. And within a couple of days of that book coming out, she got a negative review. It was a one-star review 
it wasn't that terrible, but she couldn't handle it. She couldn't process it. She had a lot of trouble with it. And she nearly left the industry. She already had signed her book, another book to another publisher. So she had to finish it. She had to go through that process and she had to put the book out there. She got a negative review on that book and she could not process it. She ended up having to pay the publisher for the rights back to the book. It was a huge disaster and she's no longer an author because she was not able to mentally and emotionally handle that. So just a quick shout out. If you cannot handle critique, this is not the industry for you. Back out before you get there because it's bad and it's expensive if you have to pull books. So just be careful, be cautious and know that this might not be the industry for everyone. And that's okay. You can still love writing. You can still love reading. It just doesn't mean that you have to be an author. You don't have to be an author just because you like books or just because you like writing stories. It's okay. I'm loving this advice. How do you resist the temptation to read them? I feel like I'll be watching it closely out of curiosity. Well, I mean, it comes down to self-discipline. Some people choose to read their reviews. I strongly encourage people not to read their reviews because it's unqualified opinions and it's not going to help you anyway. I don't read my reviews. I don't let people tell me about my reviews and all this, but unless I specifically ask them to, and I strongly encourage you not to do it either. It's only going to hurt. It's not going to help get qualified opinions from actual professionals. That's going to help you grow. Reading your reviews is not, but you entirely have that choice to read your own reviews. And if you want to read your reviews, you just have to prepare yourself, harden yourself a little bit, build up those walls and get ready because at some point you're going to get the negative comments. You can do your own reading. That's fine. If you want to like ease into it, find a friend to read your reviews and bring you the stuff. Point number three, because these are three fingers here. <laughs> Point number three, we're talking about bringing people in to do that for you to act as that intermediary. So maybe ease in trying it that way. See how you handle that kind of feedback. Um, but you can, you can if you want. If you're anything like me, you're going to internalize that. It's going to be stuck with you for a long, long time. Back in the day, back in the day, I've told this story before. Let me tell you this story. Back in the day, I had a friend who was incredibly jealous that I was an author and she was not. And she was really mean about my book. She said some very negative, nasty things just to hurt me. And then, you know, within those first couple of months of my book being out, after telling me she refused to read the rest of my book because it was so bad and like all the things, by the way, that was the number seven best-selling book out of every book in existence on Amazon, but whatever, um, she brought a review to me. And she said, oh, Cam, this can't possibly be true. Now she didn't read my book. It was true. The thing that they were talking about, they were talking about my torture scene. She didn't believe that I had written something like that because she thought it was something else. And so she brought me this review and made me look at it. And I didn't know what she was doing at the time, so. I saw parts of it and it has stuck with me my entire career my entire career it has ruined that scene for me it's ruined part of the book for me it's made it very hard I second guess myself a lot and I'm four years into my career so just be sure that you are okay with internalizing those things and using them constructively and creatively and then it's not going to hinder your feelings on your book four years after it was published so just shouting that one out there. Make sure you can, yes, compartmentalize. Your ability to compartmentalize will be great. Good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> hey, if you've got questions, we're going to wrap this up in the next minute or two. But if you've got questions on reviews and dealing with them, go ahead and drop those for me right now. And keep in mind, we can continue to talk about this later too. I know. She was a very vicious person. We're not close anymore. Whew. And remember, you know, reviews don't necessarily come in just good read reviews. <laughs> you will get people who tag you in mean tweets about your book. You will get people who DM you to tell you how bad your book is. You will get people who email you thinking that their opinions are going to matter and change. I have had, um, I've had teenagers message me and say, I didn't like your book. Here's all the things you should fix in your next book. And when I didn't accept all of their notes they they had asked if they could send me notes and I said no thank you they waged a full-out war on me and tried to cancel me with a whole bunch of people 
So you are going to get reviews in many, many forms. Some of them you will be actively able to avoid and some of them will be in your DMs and your emails and things like that. You just have to be prepared for it. You get it a lot, especially if you're popular. The more popular you become, the more people think that they can just say things to your face. It's not great, but it is what it is. Um, and we can talk about how to handle like negative social media comments and all those things in an upcoming live stream. If you would like, please let me know down in the comments if that's something that you would like to see. Do reviews impact sales? Yes and no. Yes and no. Mostly no. Um, a lot of people don't read reviews or don't worry about reviews or they know that it's people just kind of talking because they want their opinion to be out there. And so a lot, most people don't read reviews and they don't look at reviews. If they want someone's opinion, they're going to go to their social media. So unless you are very, very popular on social and you are a voice for that particular type of story, people aren't really going to care about your opinions. Um, which we discuss in the book reviews video over on YouTube and in the journal and all the things. So you can go check those out, bookreviewjournal.camrobinsonbooks.com if you want more on that. But for the most part, the actual reviews themselves, no, it doesn't really impact sales. It doesn't help. It doesn't hurt for the most part. However, the number of reviews you have and the average star rating can impact your ability to get ads for your books. So if you want to run a BookBub feature, if you want to be featured on BookBub, you have to have a certain number of reviews and an average star rating that meets their standards or they're clearly going to not take you. Um, and sometimes they're even if you have the best reviews in the entire world, they will still not take you. <sighs> BookBub's rough. Um, but this also counts for a whole bunch of like Robin Reads and Bargain Booksy and I don't know if that's the actual name, but a bunch of those sites, they will look at the number of reviews and the type of reviews and the star ratings to then say yes or no, you can pay us to advertise your book. So that is definitely a way that impacts sales. So if you have a book that doesn't have any engagement on it in terms of reviews, they're probably going to overlook you, which can cost you sales. You guys know um, I had a um, a BookBub. I had a BookBub feature and it yielded to 30, over 33,000 downloads of my book. And I wouldn't have been given that opportunity if I did not have that minimum number of reviews and that minimum star rating on that book. And that's a lot of money that I wouldn't make. So yeah, it can absolutely affect your sales, but not directly in that somebody's going to Amazon, they're reading through the reviews and then deciding it doesn't really affect it dramatically. So that's why ARC reviews are so important. Yes, yes. And it used to be back in the day that reviews were more important. It was about social proof. Now it that social proof comes from social media. When people are seeing things on Book Talk or Bookstagram or BookTube, that is the social proof they need. Back in the day, though, a couple years ago, it was less about social media, more about reviews. And people would look and say, oh, there's, there's one review on this book versus 200 reviews on this book. And that would kind of be the mentality. Um, so they would want to have those early book reviews because it made a difference. And yes, it does kind of help to trigger some algorithm things. And it does kind of give that social proof still when people find it on release day and they say, oh, OK, people are already reading this. We're getting lots of readers early. I should jump on this early. Um, and so we do still actively try to have those early reviews just because it helps and because it helps for the ads more specifically, more importantly for the ads. So if you can, when you are reading books, please leave those reviews as early as possible. One, so that you don't forget, but two, because it really helps. And if you put it off, that hurts the author a bit or a lot. So get those reviews up early, if, especially if you were an advanced reader. You, you kind of sign on for like day of release. Don't be that person who like waits. But you know, if you're reading a book just to be nice, just go leave a review. It doesn't have to be super long. And again, go to the book review journal um, dot cam robinson books dot com book review journal dot cam robinson books dot com for information on how to do that i give you a free video on how to write an effective review to help people make a decision on a book and we've got the book review journal as well so that you can take all the work out of that all right friends any last minute questions now's the time to drop those because i'm going to wrap this up this is actually gone a little bit longer than i wanted but that's okay because we're answering your questions and we're getting all the good information out there remember when it comes to reviews it's not your job to read them 
As an author, it is not your job to read them. You don't need it. It is not qualified opinions for the most part. And you need to be making sure that you're getting your critique, your opinions, and the interactions you're having through a qualified source. Put it through a lens of someone else. If you need to be getting that information from your reviews, have someone else read it and bring you the important things, good, bad, or in between, and get your critique for growing as a writer from professionals who understand the industry and what sells and what does not, what you can be working on and what you're succeeding on. Critique doesn't have to just be negative. It doesn't just have to hurt us. It can help us to grow and it can be positive as well. So find really good, strong, qualified people in your life to help buffer things for you and to help lift you up. Remember, we're not taking critique from people who want to lower us to their level. The people who are coming behind us aren't qualified to give us opinions on where we're going. We want people who have walked on the path before to look back and help lift us up to that next level. Be very, very judicial on what you are listening to when it comes to the creative content that you are creating. You've made a spreadsheet of all your TBRs and you're marking whether they're arcs and whether I have left a review yet. Oh, good. Watch Joyce. You had a good question and you don't remember it. Well, that is okay because we do these live streams every single week here on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern and on Fridays over on TikTok at 3 p.m. Eastern. So you can come join me for those. DM it to me, whatever you gotta do. Leave it on one of my comments. Leave it on one of my TikTok videos and we'll make some answers for you guys. Y'all, thank you so much for joining today as we talked all about critiques and reviews and negative book reviews and how to handle those. We are going to be, or I'm going to be sourcing more ideas for our live stream. So if you've got questions about the publishing industry, about books or like whatever I want to hear from you DM me with what you want me to talk about we'll jump on we'll do some more live streams for you we'll get your questions answered in real time friends I appreciate each and every one of you being here thank you so much for joining me today I'm leaving all the love please before you go please before you go I am going to be posting this to my main feed it doesn't count if all the comments are in the live stream. So could you please go leave a comment as soon as this is posted. Should be in the next minute or two. I just have to hit the buttons and it has to process on your biggest takeaway from today's live stream. That would be incredibly helpful to me. It is going to be a really cute thumbnail of me with flowers behind me and a book like all the good things. So it'll be up in just a minute. And leave your biggest takeaway from today's conversation in the chat. Thank you all so much for joining me. I'll see you during the next live stream. Have a great day, friends.